Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're gonna go over some of the best market tips that you can do to make sure you maximize your coins in NHL 22's Hockey Ultimate Team. We're gonna cover the best cards to go after, the best sets to do, and what cards to avoid in the auction house as you build your teams early on as the game launches. As always, guys, if you do enjoy the video, please give it a like as it does help me with the YouTube algorithm, and make sure that you subscribe as we are pushing 30,000 subscribers. All right, guys, let's get into the video. All right, let's kick things off with an X-Factor hack as as it is the new hotness in hockey ultimate team and everyone is going to be looking to upgrade the x-factors that they acquire we'll use matthew barzal as a perfect example as a lot of people are going to choose him in the pre-order pack and i want to talk about doing the final upgrade on any of your x-factor cards so if you look at the tier six here to go from tier six to tier seven it is going to cost you forty thousand coins or the base card to get to this 85 version now this applies to every single x-factor card it is going to cost an abundance of coins or their base card to hit this final tier currently in the game. What you don't want to ever do is use coins to actually do the final upgrade. So in this example, here is what you want to do for every single X-Factor card when you're looking to upgrade them to their final form. You want to go to my collection. We're looking for Matthew Barzell. So you go to NHL. We'll go all the way over to the New York Islanders, and we will go find his base card right here. 84 Matthew Barzell. You want to search the auction house, and you will see here that there is a few options up that are actually cheaper than the 40,000 coins that is the minimum to actually upgrade him from 83 to 85. Now, on top of saving a bunch of coins, there's also more advantages to doing this method. So, you would go ahead and buy this Matthew Barzal for 36,000 coins, saving 4,000 coins in the process. And then here is the added benefit of doing this. Once you have upgraded Matthew Barzal with his base card that you paid 36,000 or however much it was, as long as it's under 40 the added benefit is that when you refund a tier the final tier of an x-factor card you will either get back half of the coins you paid if you used coins to actually do the upgrade you'll get half of your coins back so i would get twenty thousand coins if i actually paid the forty thousand coins to get matthew bars out or if you use the base card to do the upgrade you will get back the entire card and it will be tradable you can't cut a card in half so if you use a tradable card to take your X-Factor from Tier 6 to Tier 7, if you ever get the untradable version, you can actually refund the final tier that you've paid for, get the tradable card back, and then sell that card on the market and get back almost all of your coins. The reason why you want to do this is because this saves you and allows you to take untradable rewards with the safety knowing that, hey, even if I pull a Matthew Barzal in untradable packs, I can double the amount of packs and cards that I get, and I can make sure that I get my coins back and not really lose anything. So guys, make sure that you are buying the base card for whatever X factor you are looking to upgrade to their final cost. On top of that, guys, you want to be on the lookout for base cards that have really popular X-Factor cards, especially going into the full launch of the game. So as an example, I will use David Pasternak and Artemi Panarin. So Artemi Panarin right now is going on the auction house, at least on PS5, for 60000 right here. And that's actually a pretty big gap. There's one up for 66000 That is 30,000 coins less than what his final tier costs for his X-Factor. It is 90,000 coins for Artemi Panarin to go from his tier six form to tier seven so because of that once more artemi panarin and david pasternak are pulled at launch of the game this cost is going to go up because the demand for these base cards is also going to go up. Now, in my opinion, I think it's going to settle about 10 to 15,000 coins under whatever that final coin cost is. So you want to make sure that you don't, you know, buy these for like 80,000 coins. I don't really think that's going to be a big value for you. You're not going to make a lot of coins. But if it's in the 60s, you could definitely make some coins, especially at the launch weekend. Next, let's talk about some of the early trends when it comes to sets. So if you go all the way over to the customization item exchange, here you're gonna see that you can trade in some of the customization items and get packs so for example this jersey number exchange you can trade in 10 of them and get a mini pack and then a jersey number choice pack in return as well you can also get the captaincy item exchange you can trade in captaincy and get a base pack and then the celebration exchange you can exchange celebration items for a premium pack and a celebration choice pack a premium pack is nothing crazy that is the pack that costs 7,500 coins and honestly the ones that really suck all of your money if you're going to spend money on the game those are the packs that you allows you to buy at nauseum because they don't really offer very good odds at all so if you go and look on the auction house right now at celebrations you go to the buy now range set it to like look at 1200 right now for one of these there is none up 
So if you have any of the celebration, let's say you did a big pack opening or you saved all your packs, these get pulled quite often. Like 1500 a little bit under that. And honestly, at night, early on in the morning hours, you can actually sell these for 1500 I sold about 20 of them. That is an insane value. I don't know why anyone is buying them at this price just for an untradable premium pack. But guys, do not do that set. Make sure that you are selling all of your tradable celebrations in the auction house. That is nuts value right there in coins. The other set I want you guys to focus on is the gold jersey exchange. So if you go through, you can see you can turn in different levels of logos, jerseys as well in terms of gold, silver, and bronze. So if you go all the way down here to the gold ones, you'll notice that for the gold jersey exchange, for that same pack, a premium pack, you can trade in 10 gold jerseys for a tradable premium pack. Why is that much better value? Because if you actually pull something in this, you actually can sell. Whereas the celebration pack, that's untradeable. Just not enough value because you can sell those celebrations for so many coins. It's way more valuable to sell those. Gold jerseys, on the other hand, there is an abundance of them on the market. And there's much more value in using your gold jerseys for this set. So if you go and look in the auction house right now, you can buy a ton of jerseys for 500 coins. Why is that worth it? Because if you trade in 10 of these jerseys at 500 coins, that's gonna cost you 5,000 in total. And if you go to the store, scroll all the way over to where the pack is actually available, you'll notice that it costs 7,500 and it gives you 10 items, at least four players and two gold players. You can almost always make that back in the actual stuff that you get in those packs with the chance of pulling something that could make you a ton of coins. Now, the only downfall is that there is a 24 hour cooldown so you can do it once a day. In all honesty, I would grab about 50 or maybe 70 of these so that you can do do it once per day because again that's just really good value and you'll almost always make more money in the pack than the cost that it will to buy the jerseys next let's talk about how to make coins early on in nhl 22 if you go to the auction house here go down to league select nhl i mentioned this in a prior video go to price range and set it for a thousand coins now depending on the console you're on because there's four separate markets uh, this is going to vary but what you want to do is just sit here and you can hit triangle or y and just refresh okay eventually you are going to see some nhl players pop up you can even raise it to 1100 right now it's kind of dead so there isn't any up but when you see any nhl players going for 1100 or under you want to make sure that you scoop them up because what you can do i mean especially right now as you can see they are already going for much more right Right now they're sitting about 1250 and there's only 17 of them in total these will all be bought pretty shortly and as the weekend goes after launch when all of the free-to-play players come and these dry up because everyone is buying these to complete the team builder sets or re-rolls you're going to make a lot more coins that's a really easy way to flip early on it's just going to take some time sitting on the market next let's talk about the ebbs and flows of the auction house now if you watch my complete guide video in terms of aki ultimate team i go over the important dates every week and when you receive rewards throughout the week that changes the overall cost of almost everything in the auction house exponentially so what you want to make sure that you're doing is that you want to sell any of your cards that you want to get rid of whether it's stockpiling gold nhlers whether it's some of the base cards that you've got that are worth a little bit maybe it's a team of the week shabbat what you want to do is sell these cards in between Sunday and Tuesdays throughout the week. And the reason for that is that there is no release of packs that are for free, and it's not a very big time during the week that people will actually spend money to open more packs. So you're receiving a lot less of an influx in cards on the marketplace. And if you want to double down, if you place it overnight Eastern time, the market is even more dry. So you can make the most amount of coins Sunday through Tuesday overnight Eastern time. So like midnight to 8 a.m. On the flip side, the best time to buy cards is after Wednesday at 5 p.m., because at 5 p.m. on Wednesday, you receive all of your rivals' rewards. You're going to see all of the players that open up those packs just want to put cards in their big pulls out on the auction house. That is when you can get the cards that you're looking for for a much cheaper price. That'll go until about Friday, because on Fridays are when events are released. But if a new event is not being released, that doesn't matter, because usually they release better event cards for whatever event is running. So, Wednesday through Friday, you want to be buying your cards. Sunday through Tuesday, you want to be selling your cards. All right, now let's talk about some cards that you need to avoid entirely right now. So again, this is before the launch of the game, and I expect things will change, especially when there's an icon, a power-up icon set released to the game, but there's no guarantee of when that is happening. So if you go and look at the power-up icons that are available right now, you are paying an insane markup on these cards all because of the card art. Let's take Mike Gartner, for example. 
This is actually a phenomenal card. He's got 91 speed and acceleration. That's phenomenal. That is what you were looking for in a winger, as well as a pretty good wrist shot at 87 accuracy and 87 power. This was actually nerfed from the launch of the game. He actually had 95 speed, which was insane. So they brought that down a little bit. So why not get this Mike Gardner if he's literally the perfect build for a winger card? He's 6'1", 190, 91 speed, 92 acceleration, and high 80s wrist shot. Currently on the marketplace right now, there is one up for 215,000 start, 275 by now, and the re another reason for that is because there just isn't any available, because there's no set to make these, you're literally just pulling them, so they're so rare. Well, the reason why you don't want to do that is because for 215,000 coins, you can get yourself a Mike Gardner, or for 100,000 coins, you can get a better card in the base, Nathan McKinnon, and also have him, if you actually pack his X-Factor card, for half of the cost. The Icon cards are going for a stupid amount, all because there isn't very many available, so they're being sold because they're just, you know, they're flex cards, and they have cool card art. But guys, don't fall into that trap. It is way better to just go and look for comparable cards that are actually better, like the base Nathan McKinnon. It's insane to think that you could go and buy Mike Gartner, who's got 84 agility and great speed and shot, don't get me wrong. You can just go get for half of the price, even more than half the price, you can get this 87 Nathan McKinnon. Want another example? Here's Brad Park, 64,000 buy now right now, and that's not even selling. Oh, look, he's got Fly the Zone. Great synergy, 86 speed on his tier one. Spend another 25,000 coins, and you can actually get him to 87 speed. Phenomenal. Honestly, there's not a lot of good left-handed defensemen that are available on the market. But if you go and look, the 84 Quinn Hughes is almost half of the cost. He's got better speed, basically the same shot, and he's only two inches shorter on defense. It's almost the exact same card, only faster. So guys, just make sure that if you're going to invest in an icon, either make it someone of your favorite player or actually get them at the correct value. Make sure that you go and look at some of the other base card or other available options to you before you go and get these icon cards because they're just an absolute brutal value. And until there's a set that actually comes out so that people can make these cards, they're not going to be a good value at all. And lastly, guys, I want to give you just kind of a special card maybe to look out for early on that I think might actually have a ton of value later on that's maybe being overlooked, and that's the 83 Seth Jones. I don't think that you should pick him over some of the other big X factors in a pack. Like, don't pick Seth Jones over Panarin or Pasternak, Kucherov, McKinnon, any of those guys. Don't do that. But if you're on the lookout for an X-Factor card and people see Seth Jones because he's only an 83 and they're selling him for anything under 150,000 coins, in my opinion, before the Friday event that comes out in NHL 22 as there's our first event comes out more likely on Friday, he gets a master set item that goes up to 86. Why is this important? Because that means he is going to get at least two more tiers of upgrades. Now, speed only goes up by 0.5, but that at minimum means that his speed is going to be 88, probably 89. His shot is all going to be in the 80s now. He's got one of the best defensive zone abilities, and he's six foot four. And the cost to upgrade him to the Tier 8 and Tier 9 is not going to be all that much because he's only an 83 overall. So I think that there's an extremely good value to go out and get Seth Jones right now because once that Master Set comes out for the first event, he's going to be really, really expensive and you're going to kind of miss your chance. All right, guys. So I hope that helps you out with some market tips early on in NHL 22. Make sure you check me out on Twitch. I'm streaming live right now at twitch.tv slash nosleeves12 and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy the content. I will see you next time. Have a great one.